Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Indians Corner here on the Indians Network. Indians Corner presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V, and of course, Indians Network uh, presented by Craig Ford and a partnership with MCG, Oski News, and Thunder Country KIIC. I'm Jamie Brockman, and uh, well, we had some action, of course, in the past week on uh, Oskaloosa Sports. We'll get you up to date on that. And a very busy week ahead as the postseason gets underway for girls basketball. Uh, boys finish up the regular season this coming week. And, of course, state wrestling also coming up this week. So a uh, very busy week ahead. Looking back uh, to Tuesday night, Oskaloosa girls and boys traveled to Indianola for a little Hawkeye Conference doubleheader. Uh, got up against some pretty tough competition on the girls' side. Um, it was 66-45 final score, but if you saw the game, uh, if you were there or watched it or whatever, uh, it, that does not tell the story of that game. Uh, it got away late, but Oskaloosa actually led that 14-8 uh, to eight after one quarter. Uh, trailed by one at halftime, 21-20. to 20. Still uh, very much in the game, only down five heading into the fourth quarter. And still about midway through the fourth quarter with single-digit deficit. And then uh, kind of got away with some turnovers and layups and free throws and such at the end. And 66-45 was the final. Uh, great uh, game by Amanda Fay, 18 points in that one. Mary Nelson, 10 points. And Presley Blommers uh, with eight Oskaloosa followed that up on Friday night with a home game, senior night, hosting Pella Christian to close out the regular season. A great game down to the wire. Pella Christian gets a 69-64 win. Uh, Oski trailed 21-12 after one, uh, down eight at halftime. Trailed by 11 going into the fourth quarter, and were able to close late and uh, get within five, but Pella Christian did get the win. Presley Blommers led the way with 15 points, Mary Nelson 13, Amanda Fay had nine for Oskaloosa as the Indians uh, girls closed out the regular season at 1-19, 0-14 in conference play, and now it's on to the postseason, which starts this coming Wednesday night at Pella, opening round of the Class 4A Regional Girls Basketball Tournament, Oskaloosa at Pella, round three between the Lady Dutch and Oski, and uh, you know they handled Oskaloosa pretty good the first time, but just the last game, just a week or two ago, it was a, a tight ball game, and Pella got an 11-point win. So Oskaloosa feeling very confident heading into that one on uh, Wednesday. We'll talk to Coach J.C. White about that coming up uh, on the show today. Boys basketball, uh, well, a night probably want to forget on Tuesday at Indianola where nothing went right, and uh, Indianola got a big 87-47 win. Uh, they had a huge first quarter putting up 30 points, and uh, Oski trailed by 29 at halftime and was just never able to overcome that. Uh, Xavier Foster held to just 12 points. Charlie North had a good game with 11. Uh, but Togo, the guard for Indianola, exploded with 27 points, and Oskaloosa just had no answer that night. Uh, big bounce back, though, on Friday, senior night at home. Oskaloosa dominates Pella Christian and avenges an earlier season 30-point loss to the Eagles at Pella Christian just a few weeks ago. And it was a 61-46 final. Oskaloosa uh, led, uh, actually trailed 17-15 after the first quarter. Uh, came back and uh, outscored Pella Christian 22-7 to in the second quarter to gain a 13-point halftime lead. Uh, stretched that out to 21-point advantage after three and then uh, ended up with a 61-46 win. Uh, everything went right. Everybody contributed. Best team effort I've seen all year out of the Indians and a great bounce back. Xavier Foster had 30 points to lead the way. Noah Van Veldhuizen on senior night had eight but a couple guys uh, coming in off the bench really contributed uh, early in that game and helped spark to Oskaloosa. Uh, David Nelson and Charlie North came in, and uh, Nelson had seven points and North with four. Uh, but those were big points in the minutes they were given that really helped spark Oskaloosa. So big win Friday night. Uh, the Indians are now 7-12 and on the year, 2-10 and in the conference. Two regular season games remaining Monday night. Uh, take the road to Burlington for a non-conference game. And then Tuesday to Grinnell for that makeup conference game to end the regular season for Oskaloosa. And then uh, postseason gets underway uh, the following week for Oskaloosa. And uh, Oski got what they wanted. They got a two seed in their district. And uh, we get 
at least, well, we get two home games if we win. So the opening game will be uh, at home against Carlisle. If we win that, uh, another home game against either Newton or bondurant Farrar, And then that would set up the uh, sub-state matchup that everybody's kind of hoping to see, round three between Oski and Pella on a neutral court to go to Wells Fargo Arena. So we'll talk uh, about that with boys basketball uh, coach coming up here in just a bit as well. Wrestling, a uh, big day on Saturday, of course. It was the uh, 3A district tournament, and Oskaloosa took everybody to uh, Des Moines East, a very tough district. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but Oskaloosa did come away with a fourth-place finish behind uh, champion Southeast Polk, who qualified 13 of their 14 wrestlers for state, by the way. Indianola was second, and Ankeny Centennial third, and then Oskaloosa, a respectable fourth. And we did get one state qualifier. First time in three years we'll have somebody on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena uh, congratulations to junior Leland Evans. He was runner up at 138 pounds, uh, lost in the finals, but won his wrestle back and earned that true second place. And he is headed to the well. Congratulations, Leland Evans. And uh, we'll be talking to him on the show today, as well as wrestling coach Chase Weber. Um, other uh, finishes for Oskaloosa, Riley Soroki just missed. He was third at 106 pounds. Uh, also third place was uh, Keegan Butler, uh, Butler Mitz at heavyweight. He lost in the finals, did not get a chance to wrestle back, and just missed out in his final high school match, finishing in third. Had several fifth and sixth place finishers as well. Uh, we'll talk about those when we talk wrestling on today's show with Coach Weber and Leland Evans. So, again, great job by the wrestlers. Great season by everybody. Young team, a lot coming back. And uh, hopefully Leland Evans can go make some noise at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines this week. So, uh, also, congratulations to Carson Breon. He was a state qualifier in swimming. He competed Saturday uh, in Iowa City at the state tournament in the 100 backstroke. And I, I read somewhere that's the first time in 30 years, I think I read, that Oskaloosa has had somebody in the state swim meet. So congratulations to Carson Breon on that. That'll get you up to date. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back here with more to come on Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V. We'll talk girls basketball and postseason getting underway this week as Coach J.C. White will join us right after this. High V's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef, arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Welcome back to this week's edition of Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network. I'm Jamie Brockman, and uh, as talked about before the break, we're going to go to uh, girls basketball. And joining us again this week is Coach J.C. White, and uh, the postseason gets underway this week for Oskaloosa girls as they go to Pella on Wednesday. We'll talk about that here in a minute. First, let's uh, go back and talk about this past week. Uh, for the Oskaloosa girls. We mentioned uh, in the open that had the loss at Indianola on Tuesday and uh, the loss at home to Pella Christian on Friday, but two good games, a, a great week and great efforts by your girls in, on both nights. Yeah, we uh, we keep saying the scoreboard's really not showing how well we're playing. We're, we're definitely playing the bas best basketball I've seen us play um, in the last couple of years. We're moving the ball well. We've got girls stepping up. Um, playing role, different roles that they're asked different nights. And so I'm really happy with what we're doing. 
Absolutely, uh, certainly, and a lot of people have uh, taken note of the change or the improvements and and been pointing that out as well, which is great to see. Uh, Sixty six forty five loss at Indianola Tuesday, but you know going in this was a team that was well they ended up being the Little Hawkeye Conference champions by the way uh, the final conference standings. Believe it or not, Grinnell uh, really slipped in the past week and a half. Uh, last week and a half, and they actually end up uh, second in the conference, tied with DCG. Indianola wins the conference at 12-2. and two. They beat Grinnell twice in the past week to get that uh, conference championship. So congratulations to them. But you knew they were tough going in, and uh, you actually uh, led – at the end of the first quarter in that one. So uh, that's not something the girls have had the luxury of playing with this year as a lead a lot. So um, what was that like in the quarter break and, and what were the girls feeling and what was the discussion heading into the second quarter? Um, you know, they were confident and you could see it on the court. They were confident in the breaks. They were confident um, really till the last few minutes of the game when it was still close and then it was a little bit of a panic. And, you know, we haven't been in situations like that against teams like that. And so, um, that comes with experience. That'll come with time where they get more comfortable being in those situations and be able to finish those games out. Yeah, we uh, uh, only put up six points in the second quarter, trailed 21-20 at halftime. And then uh, had, had a great third quarter, scoring 17 points. Uh, they scored 21. They had a five-point lead going in the fourth. And again, uh, up until a couple minutes to go, this was anybody's game. And then, as you said, a little panic set in. And uh, we probably had five or six turnovers in the last couple of minutes. Those all led to easy layups. And and it just kind of got uh, blown out a little bit of proportion there. But all in all, uh, afterwards, I think girls had to be holding their heads high and feel really good. You mentioned that uh, the first thing they said was, let's get Pella. Yeah, they were definitely confident. Um, and they're still playing with confidence. It's great to see. Um, I think, you know, against Indianola, against Grinnell, they just – they just play without thinking. There's no no thought process. It's almost like, well, I'm going to go in and just play because it's going to be a tough game and we're just going to control what we can control. And if we have that mindset in every game, um, they can do a lot of good things. Absolutely. Amanda Faye had a great game that night, 18 points. I think that's her season high, maybe a career high for her. Uh, but if she can score like that, and now you've got Blommers scoring as well, that's going to make us very dangerous. Yeah, um, that's a tough combination at one point. The other night, you know, we had Eddie Carter, Mary Nelson, Presley, and Macy. So we've got four shooters on the court with Amanda. So either you choose to guard the inside or you choose to guard the shooters on the outside, and that's that's tough for teams to match up to. So then we had Pella Christian at home on Friday and uh, senior night, and so the seniors are honored and celebrated and uh, emotions and so forth go with that. And uh, didn't go the way we would like. Uh, Pella Christian, for some reason, seemed to play their best two games of the year the two times they faced us because they certainly – uh, did not look like a team that, you know, had only three wins on the season. I mean, they played very strong again. And uh, we came back late, got within five, but that's the closest we could get. And uh, uh, what was what was the thought on that game and discussion afterwards? Yeah, um, we probably didn't execute our game plan quite as well for – consistently for that game um, we did a lot of good things though you know Van Gorp inside is a tough matchup that's probably the only team in our conference where Amanda has somebody you know her own size or bigger than her to match up to and and she was just tough you know Aubrey Blanco came in and gave us some minutes inside Lucy Roach gave us a couple minutes inside and and you know we were just trying to do what we can but she's just you know she buries people inside and and we had to make adjustments yeah you know the first time around at PC uh, Amanda played her pretty well defensively until Amanda got in foul trouble and then she was able to go off. But this time, uh, right off from the opening uh, tip, Van Gorp was just dominating inside. And uh, my broadcast partner, Doug DeCock, Doug DeCock kept mentioning that, uh, you know, we were kind of in front of her, need to be behind her. Was that something that you noticed and, and maybe pointed out to Amanda for future reference? Well, Van Gort plays better when she can bury you. So we, we were trying to get in front of her. You know, when we started getting in front of her late, she played. It was tougher for her to get shots. And so we were we were trying to throw her out of her game plan doing that. And, you know, times we did, times we didn't. And, you know, when Morgan's going off on the outside, you know, she's yeah. she had probably the best game of her season, too. And um, it was just a tough matchup for us. Yeah, I can't remember her shooting percentage from long range, Chloe Morgan of PC, but it's like 22 percent or something like that. And she drains five threes on us. Uh, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Blommers, great game for you for the freshman. 15 points. Uh, we talked about her starting to emerge as a scorer now. We've talked about her the last few weeks about being a floor leader and, and helping control the ball and knock down those turnovers. But she had a great game with 15 points. And then uh, Mary Nelson in her final home game uh, of her career, 13 points. That was nice to see for Mary. Yeah, Mary uh, has definitely been solid for us this year. 
Um, she's playing a lot better for us defensively too. And I talked to her, TC and I talked to her the other night. And we're like, man, Mary, what's up playing defense? And she said, I just, I'm, I'm not afraid my knee's going to break anymore. So she's just a lot more confident, you know, coming off of the ACL. It's tough um, having, having to come back. Um, so mentally she's just in a spot where she's not worried about it anymore. And that just allows her to play better. And she's been doing great things for us offensively and defensively. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wanted to talk about the defense a little bit. That is a big improvement uh, down the stretch here, which is obviously uh, the right time to figure it out going into the postseason, but big improvements on defense across the board. Yeah, we've been throwing different zones, different mans, um, kind of mixing it up, keeping teams on their toes, and you know we make small adjustments to different things, and we're responding well, and so I'm happy with what we're doing. Another nice thing is uh, obviously you've worked and worked and worked the last couple of years on press breaks and it shows and it doesn't seem to phase us anymore and you're seeing less of it now. So that that allows us to get more into an offensive flow. Yeah, um, it helps having a point guard, you know, somebody that wants the ball in their hands. It allows everybody else to play the role that they want to. Um, and we're just more confident against it. You know, it when we first started, it was – we, we would stop a press break and walk them to the spots and say, you need to be here, you need to be here. Now it's becoming second nature of understanding where the game's moving, where the game's flowing. All right. Well, uh, another thing that has, has emerged as this season has gone on is depth. Uh, you know, these younger players getting on the floor. You mentioned uh, several of them here a minute ago. But, you know, you're able to go eight, nine, ten deep on a regular basis, which can definitely help in the postseason uh, if if we do get in foul trouble or things like that. Yeah, definitely. It's great to have those younger girls. You know, it's tough to to watch some of those younger girls play and think long term. You know, we we have those girls playing JV minutes because we're we're not competing at a a level that our varsity should be at yet. We're getting there and there's games where it's coming. But we gotta let those girls develop and just be patient with them and um, next year especially you'll see those girls if they put the time in, in the summer they're gonna be tough because they're they're playing good basketball right now as freshmen and sophomores and when you give them that experience and let them develop into those players develop to the speed of varsity basketball that makes the program better in the long run absolutely and, and you mentioned a key a key point to all that that is put time in over the summer doesn't need to be uh days and days and hours and hours and hours and all day or anything just 10 minutes here 10 minutes there makes a big difference and uh, I see that we have talent. I see we have younger talent. I know we've got some some younger kids coming up in the next year or two also uh, from the middle school level. So if we can, I mean, w the future looks bright for Oskaloosa girls basketball, that's for sure. Um, so 1-19 regular season record. Forget about that. That's over. We go to season two now and start the postseason on Wednesday. And it's a team that we know pretty well. It's Pella round three at Pella. Um, and they got us pretty good the first time around, 67-37 in their gym. But we gave them a run for their money at our gym a couple of weeks ago. So you have to feel confident going into Pella. You know them well, and uh, we were able to withstand them a little better the second time. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, it's kind of nice to have an opponent that you know. Then the girls don't have to worry about it. They don't have to... Um, spend extra time thinking about it. They can just go out and they can play because they're familiar with them. And, you know, Pella's a nice rivalry down the road, so it'd be great to get a win. What, uh, what are your main focuses in practice leading up to this game? And what are some adjustments you might make from uh, the first two meetings? Um, we're definitely going to be using our posts inside. Um, we're just going to continue to move the ball and take shots. You know, we're, we're doing a great job offensively. And, you know, hopefully the shots are falling. <laughs> Let's talk about your bracket now. The, uh, so if you win this game, uh, the winner of this game goes to Clear Creek Amana on Saturday night uh, in the regional semifinal. Clear Creek Amana is, uh, I haven't done a lot of studying on them, but uh, uh, do you know much about them? They, they usually have a pretty tough program. Yeah, they'll be definitely a tough matchup. You know, we're taking one game at a time. So we'll look at Clear Creek Amana Wednesday night. <laughs> yep. Then the bottom half of the bracket, just to update people, is Newton at Washington in the opening round. Uh, the winner of that plays Marion on Saturday, and then the winner of that will play the winner of our bracket uh, in the regional final, which is at a site to be determined on February 25th, and from there, it's on to Wells Fargo Arena for uh, girls' state basketball. So, um, you know, it's a brand new season. The girls are feeling confident. They're playing the best they played all year. So, uh, boy, let's see what happens on Wednesday. I'm excited. I'm sure you are too. Yep, I am. <laughs> all right. Well, JC, uh, thanks for coming in again. We appreciate your time all year, and uh, it's been fun to watch these girls grow as the season has gone on. Uh, I know there's been bumps, bruises, and things along the road, but uh, everybody's withstood it, and that's the key. And uh, now we got a chance to turn it all around on Wednesday night.
Yep. <laughs> All right. That is J.C. White. She is the uh, head girls basketball coach at Oskaloosa joining us here on the Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm in Oskaloosa High V. Again, Wednesday night at Pella, opening round of the 4A Regional Tournament. Oskaloosa at Pella, 7 o'clock tip-off, and we'll have it right here on the Indians Network for you. We'll have a pregame starting around 645 on Wednesday. We'll take a break. More to come on this week's edition of Indians Corner and more Oskaloosa Sports Talk straight ahead. Hy-Vee's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef, arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Finding an internet provider can be tough. Long-term contracts, data caps, slowdowns, and unresponsive customer service can get in the way of what you really want. Fast, reliable internet. At MCG, we've removed everything that stands between you and your connection, allowing you to focus on what's important. No contracts, no data caps, no slowdowns, and no robots answering our phones. Just real people delivering really fast internet. MCG, world-class service, small town values. Swing. I'd get it one piece at a time, and it wouldn't cost me a dime. You mind your own business. Mind your own business. Body in town. I'm crazy over you. Oskaloosa. It's our community. And we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories. Sharing its smiles. We're building community. Keeping you informed. Giving you a voice. Letting you know you're never alone. During the victories and the losses. Happiness and pain for tomorrow's a new day and we'll be there working for you ready to tell your story that's our commitment it's what we do now and in the future because we're always on we're Oskaloosa News Mahaska Communication Group sees it as their mission to serve Oskaloosa and the surrounding communities. Whether it's by offering the best communication services, helping make Central Iowa a better place to live, or by simply providing solutions when no one else will. MCG operates with an understanding. Reliable, high-speed internet is a must for communities to thrive. By providing world-class service, MCG is helping to build communities where people want to live, work, and play. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's edition of Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V. 
Uh, coming up, we're going to speak uh, to Brian Keim, one of the assistants for the Oskaloosa Boys Basketball Program, talk about a good end of the week for Oskaloosa Basketball and uh, uh, a look at the end of the regular season coming up this week and, uh, and, and peek into the postseason as well, which is the following week. And uh, we're going to talk with Coach Chase Weber, Oskaloosa Wrestling, coming up here in a minute as well. Uh, and we're going to talk about our state qualifier, Leland Evans, who is going to be on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena later on this week. So more to come on Indians Corner right after this short break. Don't go away. In Oskaloosa, see your good neighbor State Farm agent, Wendell Campbell, for your insurance and financial needs. You're sure to save big at Hy-Vee now that hundreds of items are on low price lockdown and price decline. Lockdown prices won't change unless they are lowered and any item marked with a red arrow means you will save big. Come get deals on seasonal items already on your list at Hy-Vee, where there is a helpful smile in every aisle. We are back on the Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V here on the Indians Network, presented by Craig Ford. I'm Jamie Brockman. Producer is uh, Joe Millage, and we're pleased to be joined right now by uh, one of the assistants in the Oskaloosa Boys Basketball Program, Brian Keim. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks Make, for having us. Making his debut on the show. We've had, uh, God, we've had about everybody on this year. We've had Coach, Coach Foster. We've had Coach uh, uh, Howard. Of course, we've had Coach Parker. And now we throw in uh, Coach Keim. Well, Coach, uh, we got to go back and talk about Tuesday a little bit first, but we won't spend a lot of time on it because we want to focus. Please on the don't. Bo- we want to. Spend, that, we that was a big bump the in the road. Yeah, Tuesday was not a good night. No, uh, nothing went right. And uh, uh, I, the main thing I want to know is what was the feeling of the team? Eighty-seven, forty-seven loss, by the way, to Indianola. What was the feeling of the team afterwards? You know, Coach Parker just sit down and talk to the players, and, and everything was real positive uh, going forward. Uh, he just kept emphasizing, you know, we're going to just flush this game. So and that's what you got to do. I mean, there was really nothing to take out of that game positive. Uh, he, he's trying to find as many as he can and, and go from there. So, yeah, that's that really, was a tough one, though. It was. And that's really all that needs to be said, uh, because a completely different team, and I mean night and day difference, came out to the gym on Friday night at home on senior night to host Pella Christian. And this is the team we've been waiting to see, Coach. That, exactly. that was, that was uh, quite a show on Friday. Yes, it was. That's, that's the team we, we expected to put on the floor that night. Uh, Coach Parker got them energized before the game, you know, it, it, you know given the fact it was senior night. Um, but uh, we're just trying to get everybody, you know, energized for the postseason and, and get them ready to go. So. So let's talk about that at, uh, Pella Christian game Friday night more. You know, this is a team that beat us by 30 in their gym uh, just a few weeks ago right after the holiday break. And in fact, we were down 40 in the fourth quarter in that game. Uh, we didn't have Xavier playing then, and we didn't have Coach Parker. They didn't have their big player, Van Gorp, either that night. But uh, this time we, we flipped the script, and we didn't win by 30, but uh, we had them down by 22 or so in the fourth quarter, ended up with a 15-point win, 61-46. Bottom line, though, is uh, we came out to play ready, and we never lost that intensity all four quarters. Exactly. And, and that's the team we want to see, you know, here from now until the end of the season. So, and hopefully that's at Wells Fargo. Yeah, abs- that's, that's on the calendar. So, Absolutely. Let, let's talk about uh, Xavier's performance on Friday. 30 points. Um, but what I noticed about him, I, I, I'm not so sure that, that, in my opinion, that's not the best game he's played in all four years uh, at Oskaloosa High School all around. I mean, he was a leader. He was directing traffic. He was vocal. He was moving. He was uh, uh, physical. I mean, that I think we saw why he's uh, the state's number one recruit. Exactly. Uh, you know, and for me, I get, I get to, you know, mark down the stats. Uh, I get to see what he's doing on the floor. And a lot of people don't see some of the other things, which for me personally, I think he played some unselfish basketball. You know, you, you mentioned the points, but he was dishing it out. And one of the things Coach Parker said at halftime, you know, to the guys, move without the ball because Xavier's going to find you. And he was doing it that night along with his blocks and, and steals and, and various other things. So so it was a good night for him. That's an interesting point you just made uh, about move without the ball, Xavier will find you. Uh, we interviewed Zay on a postgame uh, 
last week. I um, can't remember what game it was, but it was last week. And that's one of the things he said is, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to draw two and three defenders, but I'm looking. I'm looking for my guys, and if they're moving, I'm going to find them. He said that. Now coach said it. The guys did it on Friday. We saw the result. That's something they haven't been doing all right. year. Uh, they've been kind of standing, wondering, what do we do, what do we do? Zay's in trouble. But that kid can pass the ball, and he's got good vision of the court. Yep. Uh, seems like the guys are figuring that out yep and it's it's getting the guys to buy in that you know if your guy's doubling to you know cut to the ball or to the basket excuse me uh you know and and just trust that Xavier will find you and and I honestly the last three games he's been doing a phenomenal job of that so yep, yep he has so Xavier uh, Foster led the way with 30 uh, Noah Van Veldhuizen his final uh regular season home game as a senior eight points but let's talk about David Nelson and Charlie North they came off the bench a couple of sophomores and really chipped in in that first half, and I thought kind of sparked our run that started. I mean, they came in, they got some big baskets, big points, and uh, it was needed at that time, and it really, really sparked us. Yeah, and it, and that's what it's going to take down the stretch. You know, we, you know, with eight games possibly on the schedule, um, those guys are going to have to step up for us. You know, it, it, we just can't rely on juniors and seniors all the time. It, whoever gets called to go in the game, uh, your numbers being called, go in and, and do your job and and do what what you're capable of doing and, and nothing else. So, and they did that. So it's yes, good to they, see. Yes, they did. So uh, Oski's seven and 12 right now, two and 10 in the uh, little Hawkeye conference. And uh, coming up, um, we've got Burlington on the road Monday, uh, a non-conference team. Yep. Don't know much about them myself, never seen them, but Tuesday, then we go to Grinnell and, and finish up the conference with a makeup game there. Grinnell's struggling right now, has been, um, even though they beat us early in the season, and then and then Burlington. So let's talk about those two as we finish the regular season. What are you uh, looking for in Burlington on on Monday night? Just taking what we did the other night down to Burlington and and, and doing the same thing. Play well, uh, keep getting better. You know, this will be what probably the sixth game all season that that everybody's together. So um, just take a lot of positives and into that game and and play well and, and get the win there and. And then Tuesday, we got a quick turnaround, go to Grinnell, and, you know, we're going to send a message there, you know, because we, we could possibly see them in the postseason. So we've, we've got to send them a message that, hey, we're, we're back and we're not going to lay down for anybody. So Yeah, they got us in the second game of the season, by the way. So, you know, we had a new team this year. It was only the second time out with this group, and uh, they beat us in overtime in our gym, second game of the year. Uh, so, yeah, they – they're going to see a whole different train coming into Grinnell on Tuesday night. Um, they're a team that I think kind of peaked early. I mean, they were really knocking people off early in the season, and then, and then the second half has been kind of a downhill slide for them. I think so. And, and to flip the script there, a lot of people, have, you know, said, you know, we're struggling this and that. But, you know, with not having everybody the whole season, we're not making excuses. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's tough. And – Having Coach Parker back is huge for everybody because he can throw something on the board and, in a timeout and they go out and execute it. And it's something that they've never practiced all week and things like that. That's what it takes down the stretch. And, and we're kind of getting that feeling right now. We're playing really well, and, and that's what you need to do. We didn't need to play well week one. We need to be playing well towards the end of the season going into postseason. Because that's that's where our expectations are. So absolutely. Well, let's talk about the postseason. Uh, it gets underway not this week, but next week, and uh, you got exactly what you wanted. Uh, Coach Parker went in, fought for a two seed. I thought honestly, I thought because the meeting was Wednesday morning, and I thought going into Tuesday, yeah, we have a legitimate shot to argue why we should be a two seed. And then after that Indianola game, I thought, uh oh. We're going to be in trouble. But we did get the two seed. We and, did. And, and that's exactly what we want because we get home games and uh, we, we won't have to see Pella until the final stop. That's huge. Get two at home. We've done that the past two years. And to do it a third year is phenomenal. Uh, but to play in your own gym, you know, you don't have to travel. Everything's right there. Your fans, more fans, you know, can come to the game. Uh, that's, that's huge for this group. Um, you know, it, it's funny you said Pella, but – you know we're not we're not we're not going to mark them down as a for sure thing on their side of the bracket. It could be anybody. So uh, we'll just take them one game at a time. We'll start with Carlisle and hopefully take care of business there. So Carlisle's a team that I don't think we played for two years. Uh, we played them two years ago. Uh, 
in the sub-state game at Southeast Polk to go to state. That was the year we lost the championship game at state. But uh, so we, we at least a little familiar with them uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, how are they this year? As far as Pella? No, as far as Carlisle. Carlisle. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of tape on them yet. Uh, I know we have some scouts going to see right, them Monday night, I think. Right, and uh, I'm sure Coach Foster and, and Coach Parker will be, you know, on huddle checking the things out there. So, yeah, that's all I can say there. All right. Well, that, that is uh, – it's going to be Carlisle in the opening round, and it's at, at Oskaloosa. Uh, what's the date? It's the 25th? It's on a Monday. Okay, it's 24th, 24th. 24th. So the 24th, a week from Monday, at home, Oskaloosa opens the uh, postseason hosting Carlisle. Uh, From there, you play the winner of Newton, Bondurant, Farrar. Obviously, we know Newton well. They got us early in the season. We beat them pretty uh, pretty soundly uh, the second time around in our gym. So I like our bracket. I, I really feel like, I mean, if we play with the intensity we've seen against Norwalk, against Pella, and, uh, even near what we brought to the gym on Friday night against Pella Christian, I, I, I'm very confident we'll be at Wells Fargo again. We are too, really. We really are, Jamie. You know, the coaching staff's excited for what we got looking forward. Uh, we're trying to get the players to buy into that and get them energized because it, it takes a lot of energy down the stretch. And, and so uh, one thing that's nice, we, we've been there and we've done it as a coaching staff. So uh, we lean on each other to help each other out and, and uh, the players feed off that, and we don't get razzled, you know, so that, that helps too. So Sure. Well, it's just nice to have some regularity back for yes, one. Exactly. I mean, you know, you mentioned it earlier, all the ups and downs this year with injuries, sicknesses, uh, guys in, guys out, coach in, coach out, coach back, things like that. But everything is back in place now. It is. And it uh, uh, seems like it's rolling pretty well. So uh, kudos to you guys for keeping everything at least somewhat – taped together uh, it, to get to this point because it couldn't have been easy. I mean, there, there were a lot of things you had to deal with. It, it was tough, but, uh, again, you know, we've, got, we've been together for six years now, so that helps. Uh, we kind of know each other's roles and, and what we need to do to help each other out. And so, yep. All right. Well, Coach, uh, it's been fun. It's been frustrating at times, I know, but it has been fun. And uh, I know I'm not ready to stop watching this basketball team play. I'm, I'm ready to see at least uh, uh, three more games, if not seven or eight. So uh, go get them, Coach. Good job on, uh, on keeping the train together and going. And, uh, and we look forward to seeing you Monday and Tuesday. Appreciate it. That is, Brian, that is Brian Keim. He's one of the assistants on the Oskaloosa Boys basketball team joining us here on Indians Corner again uh, this week, Monday at Burlington. Tuesday at Grinnell, and then that finishes up the regular season for Oskaloosa. They then get almost a week uh, to open up the postseason on Monday the 24th at home against Carlisle, and uh, we'll have all those games I just mentioned coming up for you right here on the Indians Network where you can catch Oskaloosa basketball. We'll take a break. More to come on Indians Corner. We're going to focus on the mats coming up. Uh, We're going to talk to Oskaloosa wrestling coach Chase Weber and Our state qualifier, Leland Evans, is going to join us. Don't go away. In Oskaloosa, see your good neighbor State Farm agent, Wendell Campbell, for your insurance and financial needs. You're sure to save big at Hy-Vee now that hundreds of items are on low price lockdown and price decline. Lockdown prices won't change unless they are lowered and any item marked with a red arrow means you will save big. Come get deals on seasonal items already on your list at Hy-Vee where there is a helpful smile in every aisle. I'd get it one piece at a time and it wouldn't cost me a dime. For me, it was an easy switch to, to pick MCG. As a content creator, I need to have like a reliable service. My previous service was totally unreliable. The, the connection to the internet was horrible. Um, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. It, there were days where you would try to get online and your service wasn't available. Or the kids wanted to watch something and it wouldn't load and wouldn't load and wouldn't <laughs> load because that's all we have is Netflix and Hulu and we're so much happier <laughs> with MCG. The service has always been reliable uh, since day one. It was just kind of a no-brainer. 
Hy-Vee's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef. Arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! Oskaloosa, it's our community, and we're thankful to be a part of it. Telling its stories, sharing its smiles, we're building community, keeping you informed, giving you a voice, letting you know you're never alone during the victories and the losses, happiness, and pain. For tomorrow's a new day, and we'll be there, working for you, ready to tell your story. That's our commitment. It's what we do, now and in the future. Because we're always on. We're Oskaloosa News. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car. And you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 641-673-4462. Welcome back to Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa Hy-Vee here on the Indians Network. And uh, we're going to focus now on the mats and uh, uh, overall successful day for Oskaloosa at the uh, 3A District Tournament this past Saturday um, at Des Moines East. And uh, we're joined now by Oskaloosa wrestling coach Chase Weber. And um, it was a busy, stressful day Saturday for uh, all wrestlers across the state of Iowa as uh, district tournaments were held in all three classes. Uh, we do have several area state qualifiers uh, from area schools, including our own Oskaloosa, where uh, Leland Evans has qualified for state at 138 pounds. And we're going to talk to Leland here in just a bit. But uh, first of all, Coach Weber, um, all in all, a great day for your guys. Uh, our young team going into a very tough district. And you come out with a fourth-place team finish behind Southeast Polk, Indianola, and Ankeny Centennial. Um, I have to feel pretty good about the overall performance. Yeah, overall, we felt really good, and we kind of called it last week talking to you, saying conference was a little down, and we knew where we could be and where we wanted to be. And, I mean, as a team, that's probably about as good as we could get. I mean, behind those giant teams, it's a little bit harder to get, the, you know, any type of team recognition. But overall, we had people place. We had people finish the tournament. I think there's only three guys that, that happened to got beat out, and everyone else kept wrestling throughout the day, earning team points, earning placement points, things like that. So overall, yeah, I mean, it's cliche to say we're not satisfied. We wish we would have had a couple more. We wish we could have got a couple things to go our way. But, you know, we did have the Leland Evans wrestled just a superb whole tournament, wrestled really well, and came out with the qualification. Absolutely. 11 of our 14 uh, guys did bring home uh, a place. Uh, they only placed through six. So that was uh, great to see. And uh, there were some close losses uh, that affected that. Of course, the district tournament, uh, if you lose your opening round match, your chances to go to state are gone. The best you can do is fifth. But I was happy to see that the guys didn't just throw in the towel and say, well, I can't go to state. I'm done, you know, and go out there and give a lackluster effort. They came back and fought. We've got several fifth place finishes. Um, and uh, I'm going to focus on uh, a couple of the uh, – the seniors first, Wyatt Creer and Cody Gunn. We obviously had hopes of them making it to the well. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, but those were both close, nail-biting losses for them in that opening round. Oh, yeah, it makes it feel a little bit worse and, and bites you a little bit harder, but 
you know, seating meeting, and we talked last week, talked about how common opponent and matchups, head to head, things like that, where Cody missed out on matches, so we didn't have as many chances for criteria. So we get put on a line where we knew Southeast Polk was going to be tough, and it was a pretty fair matchup. I mean, it ended up 13 11, yep. but it was 12 11 with five seconds left. We let him go to try to do something crazy. So, you know, we sharpen up just one move, we can win that match, or, you know, one lucky thing goes our way where where we win that match, and then that kid ended up coming all the way back and qualifying. I mean, he did the path that we thought we could do, you know, come back, win the wrestle back, and, and take yourself to state. But, you know, yeah, so it, it doesn't make it feel any better, but we were right there. And then Wyatt Creer, you know, he had a great senior season. He had 30 wins. He had over 20 pins. I mean, he was, did everything he could. And then same thing with we had one match where the head-to-head -head moved us on the bracket, and then – we had a tougher first round match where we had beaten that guy in the first week of the season. And that guy definitely looked like he was prepared more for us. Uh, he was in better shape. I remember him gassing out that first week. And you know, so he made his adjustments and it was a close match the entire time. I mean, there's probably five different stalemates where he was in on a leg and we stopped him or we couldn't quite get in on a shot or, you know, things like that to the point that he had just that little bit of an edge at the end where we, we lose that heartbreaker and yep. go to the backside. I think he got, uh, I think he got taken down with like 15 seconds remaining, and 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 that was the difference. And that's that's a tough loss for Wyatt. But again, great season as you said, great career uh, for Wyatt, and also for Cody. It was tough uh, for Cody to have to sit out the first half of the season with that knee injury. Um, but uh, they both uh, settled for a fifth place finish. Other uh, fifth place finishers were uh, Trey Miller, our freshman at 120, Salvador Gonzalez at 126. Uh, Zach Beebe at 132. We mentioned Wyatt Creer and Cody Gunn, both uh, fifth at 145 and 160. And then sixth place finishes were uh, Blake Westerkamp at 170, Will Campbell at 182, and Warren Feudner at 220. Had a couple near misses for state. Uh, third place finishes for Riley Siroki at 106 and Keegan M Butler Mitts at heavyweight. Both finished third. Now, Riley didn't get a chance at a wrestle back, unfortunately. But no, Riley got fourth. But or fourth. He right. was going for third, which is the best he's ever had a chance to do. So, I mean, improvement-wise, he, he stepped up another notch on the podium, but now he's got to do another one. He's yeah. only got one more year left. So, yeah. Well, but yeah, next year is the year. But Keegan did get a wrestle back, he and uh, he finished third. Uh, he had a tough opponent in the wrestle back, and uh, ended up getting pinned. But uh, great season by him. Great effort, and just missing it. Right. We kind of the same thing of getting comfortable. It wasn't that he was making these leaps and bounds on improvement. It was just getting comfortable with what he was capable of. You know, just to get to that wrestle back i mean he hit a low ankle shot that he's done in practice but never does in a match and he actually did it climbs up pins the kid and we get our we get the chance to go to state you know at the true second place match i thought the first period went really well we pulled back and forth the other guy he head bobbed a lot but didn't do much and then we end up oh just getting kind of caught flat-footed and get taken down and we did our normal sit out and just wasn't quite strong enough to roll through our normal position that he does all the time to guys. And so we were to be proud of a loss. We were proud of the way he went down. He was moving. He was wrestling. He didn't get caught. He didn't do anything dumb to where we, we could have said, what if he did something smart? He was wrestling hard. So what was the deal with his wrestle back opponent from Southeast Polk? He, uh, medical forfeited in this, in the finals. And, uh, and I saw that, and then I saw Keegan won his third place match and had a wrestle back, and I thought, oh my gosh, he just qualified for state because that kid's injured. But then he came back and wrestled and pinned Keegan. So what was the deal in the finals with him? Uh, just avoiding a match. Okay. I mean, I wondered. <laughs> kind of, kind of look at some of the college tournaments in the, earlier in the year, and even if you watch the big the conference tournaments at the end of the year, if if you've already wrestled the guy and you maybe you're a little dinged up, or maybe you don't want to risk getting tired i think that's what the, their game plan was was the ames guy's really freaking good and he's already probably wrestled them before and knew that you know this isn't going to be pleasant so let's just let's just avoid it and then it's if a there's a to take though i mean but if there's a wrestle back they're they're saying well we're just going to be rested yeah so it's it's a it's not moral but it's just a different tactic you right. can kind of use yeah 
Well, again, all in all, a great day uh, for Oskaloosa on the mats at Des Moines East Saturday. Fourth place team finish, uh, mid-pack, and, uh, you know, behind the three powers of Southeast Polk, Indianola, and Ankeny Centennial. Uh, so we've got Leland qualifying for state at 138 pounds. Uh, he was a runner-up, won his wrestle back after uh, being defeated in the finals. True second-place finish. And uh, it's the first time in, in three seasons we've had a, uh, a wrestler on the mats at Wells Fargo Arena. So that's exciting, and uh, we know the kind of – uh, worker and wrestler that Leland is, and, and very uh, very well deserved. Uh, yeah, this year he's really turned that corner into closing the gap on the on the top tier kids, and then beating out the kids that we all look at on paper and say you should beat. And he hasn't had any of those any of those bad matches. And you know, coming in Saturday, he's he's got confidence. We had a good two seed to help him out mentally, just looking at the bracket and coming out wrestling smart wrestling hard he kept moving he didn't slow down and i think he, he might have been a little tired at the end but at least he at least he gutted it out when he needed to absolutely and and we congratulate him and again he's going to join us on the program here in just a couple of minutes and we'll talk to our state qualifier leland evans but um i know uh the brackets are out they were released uh on sunday and uh you know who his opponent is so what do you go to work on in the room monday tuesday wednesday to get him prepared for thursday uh, actually, just a couple of things we noticed Saturday. A couple of things we want to get better at, whether it's a single leg position or if it's, you know, defending legs or something like that, to where we want to be prepared for the people down at state. So we'll have his workout partners do very specific situations, and and we'll just try to keep wrestling live to keep his cardio up. But it's it's just getting better at what he wants to get better at. All right. Going to be exciting. Uh, he'll hit the mats on Thursday at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. Um, and just a, a reminder out there, uh, if you want state wrestling coverage, there's only one place to go. That is Thunder Country, 96.7 FM, KIIC. Wrestling fans know this, but uh, it's the best coverage you're going to find. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they cover it across the board, all three classes. Um, you've got uh, uh, several different voices. You've got guys down mat side on wireless mics interviewing wrestlers and coaches. And uh, the best coverage you're going to find all three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, 96.7 FM, Thunder Country, KIIC. You can stream it at KIICradio.com. And uh, if you don't have the, the Thunderbolt Thunder Country app, make sure you go to your app store and get that. Those are, those are ways you can follow the action at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. We'll be following Leland Evans and uh, all of our other area qualifiers in 1A, 2A, and 3A as well. So uh, a successful season and all. We've talked to you about that. We'll, we'll do a full recap once state wrestling is done and we bring you back in, but uh, a young team uh, that went and battled against the best in the state. And uh, I think gained some respect from them leaving that gym on Saturday. And uh, now we go and see what Leland can do Saturday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But um, what, uh, what are your expectations going on? What are your goals and expectations for Leland? Well, biggest goal is we, just, we want to win, win a match. I think that that's number one, win the first match or in the worst case, win the second match, but win a match is number one. And we go in, We'll have time to kind of get acclimated to the arena and let them walk around and things like that. But you just got to go in and you treat it just like Saturday. I mean, it's do or die. You know, you can't take anything for granted. And when you go wrestle, you got to block out any distractions. It's just, you know, you hear a lot of people say that, but it's still the truth. Yep, absolutely. Well, Coach, congratulations on a, on a great year. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys Thursday. Hopefully we see you again Friday. And, boy, it would be great to see you Saturday, too. Yeah, it would be great to keep going. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. That is Chase Weber. He's the head wrestling coach at Oskaloosa joining us here on Indians Corner. Take a short break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk to the state qualifier himself, Leland Evans, joining us right after this. Ivy's Choice Reserve and Prime Reserve Beef. Arguably the best beef in America. Their quality and flavor are undisputable, undeniable. Let's get ready to be unstoppable! And the winner by unanimous decision. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car. And you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call State Farm agent Wendell Campbell at 601-300-3300. 
And we are back here on Indians Corner, presented by Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V on the Indians Network. Jamie Brockman, continuing our wrestling talk now, and uh, look who's joining us. It is our uh, state qualifier for Oskaloosa Wrestling at 138 pounds, Junior Leland Evans, uh, ranked number 10 in 3A at 138 pounds, entering the district tournament. And Leland, congratulations. Uh, Got to feel pretty darn good. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, a lot of nerves, a lot of excitement. Well, there you go. Take me through your day Saturday. Uh, take me through the whole tournament. I know you had to fight at the end uh, to earn your spot, but uh, uh, cruised into the finals anyway. Um, Saturday was fun and eventful. I came in, actually I was a bit irresponsible, came in a little heavy, had to lose some last minute weight, started off the day rough there, and then kind of got lucky and pulled. I pulled the, well, it wasn't like I pulled the two seed and got lucky on my draw, wrestled Pella first round, which I knew would be a good would just warm up match and just get me ready for the semis against uh, Atumwa, which is ranked eight or nine on another, another site. So I knew it would be a difficult match there. So I was just really looking forward to that Pella match, get me warmed up for the semis. Yep. And then uh, finals. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I can't imagine what goes through your head going into the finals. Um, but, uh, you know, you had time to prep. You went out there, came up on the short end. But uh, tell us your thoughts on your finals match. Um, there's a lot of. I think it's definitely a Southeast Polk. Um, he's definitely a beatable opponent. nerve-wracking going in nerves were a big thing on Saturday which can be a good or bad thing but right it was it was fun well I bet the nerves amped up even more after that finals loss because now you you know you're biting nails pulling hair hoping to get a chance to wrestle back you did uh, and uh, uh, and you took care of business in the wrestle back you said you're not taking this away from me yeah so I uh, after my finals match I lost and then came off the mat and heard that the kid that I beat in the semis had lost to, which means that someone has a wrestle back against me, which yep. is kind of, I was kind of on a good stride that day, and it kind of just killed my whole vibe and kind of messed things up. And so I uh, just kind of got ready for the next match, and it was an opponent I had wrestled earlier on in the year, but at a different weight class. We wrestled at 145, and I only beat him 1-0, so I knew it would be a close match, and I knew it, would be, it wasn't going to be easy because he wants to go to state too. So I was just looking for uh, expand points where I can and just do my best, and I want to go to state, so let's do it. Yep. I think 7-3 to three was the final, if I remember right. Uh, decision win for you in that wrestle back, and uh, then you punch your ticket to Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. So uh, what went through your head immediately when the uh, ref uh, blew that final whistle and you looked at the scoreboard and you said, I've done it? Well, come down to the end of that match, I was uh, – I could tell the – I was starting to break him, you know, in wrestling. It's a big mental sport. And when you're trying to break your opponent, and then I saw the, well, I thought to myself, you know, this is where I wanted to be. This is my goal right here. I'm this close, and uh, it's actually happening right now. Coming down to the last 30 seconds, he goes for stand-ups, and it's just a quick mat return. And I was just kind of getting some adrenaline going. I was just kind of powerhousing him at the end and just finishing that match strong. And then winning it is a big relief. It's a tiring day, four matches, and they were all, they were all good fought matches. So it was tiring, and then it's just the big relief and excitement of going to state. Absolutely. Now, uh, coach mentioned earlier, you know, the atmosphere, the energy, the emotions when you uh, walk into the well, uh, and you've got you know thirteen thousand people uh, uh, watching wrestling and eight mats stretched out. I want to go back to your youth, though. You've been in that. I mean, it's a different atmosphere. That was youth compared to state mm -hmm. high school. But you've been you've wrestled at Wells Fargo before as a youth in a state tournament. Uh, you've been in in big situations like this. I've been to Wells many times youth wise, but it's the first time high school, and uh, it's a big deal. It's kind of it's a whole different ball game. Um, high school wrestling, youth wrestling is just 
there's a big intensity pickup, and uh, I'm excited to see what the difference is. And uh, it's been a minute since I've been down there on the floor at Wells Fargo, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, uh, we know who your opening round opponent is. Uh, do you even study him at all, or do you just worry about Leland? Um, it's kind of I've learned that wrestling my match is the best thing I can do. Um, wrestle to my ability and not so much worry about his. Uh, but we got some – I just got some scout information stuff on him that I can look at and help me out and see what's going to work best on him and just uh, wrestling my match and going out there and doing my thing. What do you feel your strengths are? I mean, wh where do you excel? Um, I think it depends on the match, honestly. Uh, I'm better off neutral. I think I can keep up with most opponents neutral and have a better advantage. And then on bottom, if I'm good on energy, I don't really struggle there. Um, if I'm tired, though, I don't. I, it's more of a stalling position for me. <laughs> um, otherwise, on top, I just get at working wrists and breaking them down and riding them out and looking for back points and stuff like that. It'll just see how we compare and what's going to work best on him. All right. Like that. So going into the well, what are your goals? What do you obviously you want to win a state championship, but what what are you setting as realistic goals for yourself? Um, it's been a childhood thing to be in the Grand March. I know, like this this year's goal was just really to be uh at state but this year walking in um looking at just doing my best I'm, i've met my goals i've done what i want to do i'm just looking to have fun this year and obviously that's my best but being a part of that grand march would be pretty exciting so top eight uh get into that 16 in each bracket and top eight uh, earn medals and get into that grand march and if you do leland it's going to be a memory you'll never forget that's for sure so congratulations it's Thank been you. a great year for you uh three tournament championships for him individually uh runner up at district going to state so now we uh, try to punch the next goal uh off uh check the next goal off the list for uh, leland and have some success at wells fargo arena again you can follow leland and all of our area wrestlers live thunder country 96.7 fm kiic thursday friday saturday from wells fargo arena in des moines that is leland evans he's a junior at oskaloosa high school and he's wrestling on the match this week at the state wrestling tournament for oskaloosa at 138 pounds we will take a break and we'll be back to uh, finish up this week's edition of indians corner after this And uh, I want to thank our guests for joining us this week uh, on the Indians Corner. We say a thank you to uh, J.C. White, Oskaloosa head girls basketball coach. Wish the girls the best of luck in their uh, postseason, which starts Wednesday at Pella, 7 p.m. tip-off. And we'll have it right here on the Indians Network for you on Wednesday. Thanks to uh, Brian Kime, the assist, one of the assistants in the Oskaloosa Boys Basketball Program, for joining us today. And uh, Oskaloosa at Burlington Monday, at Grinnell Tuesday to finish the regular season this week. We'll have both of those for you here on the Indians Network. And uh, then wrestling, big thanks to Chase Weber, Oskaloosa wrestling coach, and uh, Leland Evans, our state qualifier at 138 pounds, for taking time out to join us today as well. Good luck to Leland at uh, Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines this week. I know we'll all be watching and following close. Hopefully you can get down to the well and cheer on Leland. Let him know you support him. But if you can't, live coverage on 96.7 FM Thunder Country KIIC all three days of state wrestling. Thanks to our sponsors, Wendell Campbell State Farm and Oskaloosa High V, and a big thanks to my producer, Joe Millage. For all of us at the Indians Network, my name is Jamie Brockman. Thanks for watching. Go Indians!